Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 66 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. It's time to check out some of the upgrades and additions I made between last episode and this one. I got myself a full set of power suit armor. Awesome. Uh, I've got the uh, helmet, I've got the torso, I've got the legs, and I've got the feet. Let's go for a run outside and see what kind of awesome speed I get. You might notice that my normal running speed is noticeably faster. It's actually double. And uh, my sprinting speed, well, tripled. Nice. Uh, I also have a really nice jump ability, so this is just me jumping. I am holding space, and it is uh, continuing to jump like this. How cool is that? Uh, now, of course, I can hit H here to turn on my jetpack, and whoosh, away I go. Wow, that is some uh, really fast flight right there. That is a pretty nice amount of flight, as a matter of fact. I'm liking that. Uh, now, of course, if I wanted to, I could toggle uh, some of my other abilities by adding new hotkeys. So, for example, I could create a new hotkey called J. I don't know, I'm just making it up. And I can toggle, um, you know, these upgrades here. These are my sprinting and jumping assistance. Um, this guy right here is uh, my shock absorbers. They uh, prevent me from taking damage when I fall. And this dude, uh, I forget what he is. He's something on my helmet. I forget. Uh, flight control. That's right. Nice. Uh, flight control is actually a good one. Let me show you this. I have to fly in order for this to happen. Uh, but we'll turn the jetpack on and look what happens when I let go of space. Flight control. That's what that does. So uh, the flight control module changes it more to like a creative mode flight than uh, anything else. Uh, just note that like as you're moving around, like if you're facing the ground when you move forward, you'll come in for a landing basically. Um, but you will be able to hold your position in the air. So the flight control is kind of like some flight stabilizers. Note that um, you know looking up will make you go up, and looking down will make you go down. Oh, it's getting to be dark out. Let's take a look at coming in for a landing. Oh man, that. Is really fast. Uh, I better turn off my jetpack, sneak away inside, and take a nap because it's getting dark out. I'm having too much fun with this. Uh, but I can hit J here if I ever uh, don't like anything. And J, sprint assist, off, jump assist, off, and look, normal movement. So uh, I've gone ahead and disabled uh, both the sprinting and the jumping ability. Uh, but of course, uh, hitting J again, and boom, jump and sprint assist are back on. Cool. Uh, all of these modules are modifiable. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn everything off for a moment here. I might change some of these hotkeys around. We'll see. Uh, but if we come into the table, I want to show you guys exactly uh, what I've added. So uh, for my helmet, I gave myself flight control. Important one here. There's no tinkering or changing. It just basically does what I showed you. Allows you for a pseudo creative mode flight. It's not the same as creative, but it's pretty similar. Now I could have put in an aura meter. Uh, that will uh, require some thalmic goggles. So you have to actually make the goggles and it'll sh show you the, uh, the the aura values on your HUD, but it does not show you the aura nodes. So might add that, might not, we'll see. Uh, another module I put in here is the solar generator. It collects energy from the sun. Cool. You might have noticed my uh, energy staying nice and filled up. Uh, I did not put the auto feeder or the water electrolyzer in here. Uh, the, water, the auto feeder will allow you to uh, automatically eat food in your inventory, where the water electrolyzer will use some energy to uh, refill your air. Cool. Didn't put any armor on any of this stuff yet. Probably should at some point, especially if I'm going to go fight and stuff, but we'll see. Power armor torso. I uh, did not put active camouflage in. Should put that in at some point. We played with this one last episode, so you kind of know what's there. Uh, for energy, though, I added the kinetic generator. It generates power as you're walking, and at this point, it's going to uh, generate about like 1k joules for every uh, five blocks walked. Nice. Adds a little bit of weight for that, so keep that in mind. I also put on sprint assist, and I bumped the power up as much as I could. Uh, your power module here will adjust the sprint energy consumption and uh, the sprint speed modifier, so you can go down here 100% or all the way up to 300%. So basically it'll make you sprint that much faster. And then walking assist is your walking speed modifier. Neat, right? Uh, so I kept those maxed out, as did I jump assist. So you can see here I'm jumping 500% higher than I normally would be able to. And again, completely modular. Make it as high or as low as you want. I did not fill in compensation. That requires more energy. And basically what that does is it reduces the um, exhaustion that you get. So basically your food level going down. Uh, I, I did not put those guys in. I figured, eh, I can just eat food. I don't want to cost more energy to travel around. But yeah, we'll see. Might want to play with it. Then finally, my uh, feet, I added the shock absorber. 
cool. Uh, this is your impact energy consumption distance reduction. Basically, you can adjust how much um, you know your shock absorption occurs. It, it makes you not take damage from falling. And uh, I did not put jet boots in because I kind of have the flight from my armor, so I'm cool. Now, the really interesting thing here that you might notice is that many parts of my armor do not have an energy value associated with them. Well, the good news here is that all modular power suit armor shares energy with each other. So because I've got energy stored in my torso and in my tool here, I'm able to store a decent amount of juice. Cool, right? Uh, so we can see here that, you know, when I've got the uh, tool equipped, I've got 10 MJ, and uh, without the tool equipped, I've got just the one. Nifty stuff, right? So I don't have to put uh, energy in these guys. And I also made it a point to keep myself below the 25 grams of weight. So let's take a look here. So, or 25 kilograms, I guess. Uh, so my armor gives me 10 kilograms of weight. My legs give me four, and that's mostly coming from the kinetic generator here. And then uh, nothing else has weight except the uh, weight of the tool, which is 10. The important thing here is that you keep below 25. Any weight above 25 will start to uh, impact your movement speed. So keep that in mind if you do bump up more weight um, so just you know remember weight equals slowness uh, if you're above 25 total for all your armor and I've still got this nifty teleport effect which I think is awesome and of course uh, got here the massive damage of this giant orb of powerful awesomeness haha <laughs> jetpack on sprint and jump assist on oh yeah Pretty cool, right? So uh, probably going to want to tweak and change some of the uh, key bindings because for me, uh, H and J are kind of far away from like the W, D, A, whatever keys that I normally use. So maybe I'll see if I can flip that around to F and G. I don't, I don't know what G means. It said it was in use already when I tried to bind it, but I'll track down its use and uh, maybe remap it. Let's see. Options. Key binding controls. What's G? Toggle. Toggle what? Oh, you know what? G is for my uh, minium stone. That's what that's for. Okay. Well, I could probably leave that as is. I don't know. We'll see. So let me play around just a little bit, and I will be back in a few when I'm ready to play with this stuff. All right, so here's the key bindings. I went with F uh, for the flight and V for the uh, sprinting assist. Cool. Now when I hit F and V, it turns on and off my sprint and jump assist, and then F, of course, is your jetpack. Oh, that's awesome. All right, so I'm going to play around with this armor for a little bit. We'll see how we like it, and maybe we'll eventually build a gravity suit. You know, I could always build one for you guys if I need to, and, uh, you know, if you want it, then you're more than welcome to play with it. How's my nuke doing, by the way? Speaking of things, wow, I am going to have to get used to that jumping ability. Holy cow. That is some craziness. Uh, nuke is doing fine. Yeah, look at that. Everything's staying cool. Everything's operating. I like it. Just going to take a quick sneak peek down here. All right, not bad. Lots of UU. Cool. Now remember, when this chest fills up, it's going to emit a redstone signal that will turn off the whole thing. Cool. All right, I'm just going to leave that running for a bit, and I think what I want to do is work on some kind of way to transmit power uh, right here out of this building and into uh, somewhere that I want to go. So there's a couple of ways I could really do this. Um, let me start messing around, and then I'll be back to demonstrate to you guys a nifty way to transfer power. I've done it in the past. Basically, use Lapitron crystals and uh, use them as battery transfers, because long story short, if I ran some really long cabling between the two locations, well, I'm I would uh, probably wind up having a little bit of difficulty. Uh, it would, you know, waste a bunch of EU, and that would not be fun. So, gonna need to figure out a way to send power from point A to point B without wasting too much of it. And my uh, quarry is also still running, which I'm happy to see. We're definitely going to want to get into some applied energistics. May even start this episode. If I don't start this episode, I'll definitely start it soon, because I want to get uh, an applied energistic system going pretty soon here. Alright guys, we'll be back in just a moment. Alright guys, I am ready to build a system that will automatically transfer power and recharge items. How's that sound? I thought it sounded like fun. So uh, there's a couple different ways you could do this and it's all about like how big you want it to be and how you want to do it. You could really do it with um, theoretically I think you could do it with build craft, you could do it with red power, you could do it with computer craft, you could do it with a lot of different options, basically. Um, but what I'm going to do here, all right, is a pretty nifty little solution. Uh, let's see here. How's my UU matter doing? Still doing pretty good. Uh, what I want to do is uh, use a computer craft turtle, a gate reader module, and uh, a little bit of programming, really not much. And I'm going to come up with a way to automatically charge items and store them in different uh, ender chests. And oh, look, my... Uh, 
my storage is full. Fun times. All right, I'm gonna go turn this thing off until I'm ready to build an applied energistics module because I am totally running short on storage and it's becoming nuisancey. Where are we at? What got clogged? Not you. Not you. Nope. Must have been this one. All right, something got clogged somewhere. I'll track that down. Uh, a good way to fix this, by the way. I'm not sure if I ever showed you guys this on camera real quick. I'll just do it. Uh, a good way to solve this is to just go ahead and put a chest here. And then anything that did get backlogged, it's always those things. I don't know why that's the case. There we go. Uh, it'll now sort properly. I don't know why. For some reason, those uh, those those fences always become a problem. So let's use computer craft. All right. So what I want to first create is what's called a gate reader module. It can use any color of wiring, and we're going to need uh, any kind of gate. I think uh, pretty much any gate. So I think I might even have some of that stuff handy. Let's see. I do one. Take four of you and uh, what else was it? Redstone. Yeah, redstone. I got a little bit of that. Here we go, gate reader module. Let's see, nice, that worked. We're also gonna need a uh, turtle. So let's get one of those guys. Uh, should have pretty much everything I need here. Do I have a smooth stone in here maybe? I do, good. Well, let's do it like this. So we need a computer and we just need one. And we wanna upgrade it to a turtle. So for that, we're probably going to need uh, a chest, which conveniently I just made one of. What, don't I have any iron? Apparently not. There we go. Ta-da! Turtle, nice. Now, combine your turtle with a gate reader, and you've got a gate reader turtle. Nifty. What's a gate reader turtle do? Well, let me write a quick program to demonstrate for you guys what a gate reader turtle does. And to demonstrate, I'm going to place him right here next to this inventory. Cool. We are going to create a little program here. There we go. Quick program written. Uh, basically, we connect to the peripheral on the right, which is the gate reader on the right of the turtle. And he will act like a uh, logic gate, one of these nifty gate things that we make. Okay, And he'll be able to read data out of inventories, out of adjacent blocks, all kinds of other cool stuff, and store it in a variable. In this case, I'm storing it in the variable called data. And uh, I'm going through all the information it gets and printing it out to the screen. So let's go ahead and run the test program. And we should see that currently space and in inventory is true. Items in inventory is true, inventory full is false, and inventory empty is false. So all of that makes pretty much perfect sense. And uh, if we were to use just a normal old gate, let's wait for this thing to cook up. So basically, if we had any kind of gate on this inventory, it would be able to read the same information out of the inventory, okay? So we've got, you know, uh, inventory empty is false, items in inventory, space in inventory, inventory full. That's exactly the same thing it would be able to read, okay? So basically, the gate reader turtle acts like a gate, and then we can do all kinds of nifty and interesting stuff with it. So let's see what happens if I were to, for example, uh, place this next to an MFSU. Okay, let's try it out. Gate Reader Turtle, what kind of information can you tell me about an MFSU? Oh, uh, good problem. We have to uh, label set gate read. I have to write that program again now. So the MFSU has all kinds of extra information. It can actually determine whether or not there are items in the inventory, just like a chest can, but it can also determine if it's discharging or charging items and uh, what the current status of that charging or discharging is. In fact, let's go ahead and break this guy now and we'll just put a regular old gate next to it to demonstrate. So right here we can see the following information. Uh, we can see inventory data because it is an inventory, but also it can read the capacitor, whether or not the capacitor is empty. It has energy, space for energy, or full. It can also check the charging status. Is it charging an item that's currently empty, partially charged, or fully charged? And the same for discharging, empty, partially charged, and fully charged. Now here's the interesting thing about this gate, and I don't know if it's a bug in industrial craft or what, but note that uh, right now, uh, even though the inventory is empty, charging empty item, well, charging empty item is returning as true. That doesn't make any sense. Charging partially charged item is false, and charging fully charged item is also true. Uh, same for discharging. Uh, so it looks like if the inventory is empty, it returns true uh, when it's discharging or f discharging fully or empty charged item, which is 
weird. I don't know why that is, but uh, I'm going to work around it in the program. And that's kind of why I'm using uh, the computer craft program for this uh, rather than just regular logic gates. So I definitely have to clean this downstairs up. Maybe uh, coming up soon, uh, dealing with lots and lots of items by Applied Energistics, we are going to make this room a little bit nicer very soon. Uh, but for now, I want to auto charge items because we're going to need to be able to send item uh, power from one spot to another. In this case, I want to be able to uh, charge items and all kinds of other interesting stuff, uh, you know, over here. So let's take our gate reader turtle and see what we can do. Okay, so I'm actually going to need two uh, ender chests for this. I determined that I want to use two ender chests, one that will maintain the uh, full items and one that will maintain the empty ones. And for now, we'll just use Lapatron crystals to transfer back and forth. Sound like fun? Okay, I'll be right back once I've made a couple Lapatron crystals, a couple ender chests, and whatever else I might need. All right, just for fun, I decided to color my ender chest black, black, red, and black, black, green uh, to represent the empty items and the full items. So uh, I'm going to basically have two chests, one that has fully charged items in them and others that have empty items in them. Cool. So I've got my gate reader turtle ready to go. I'm going to sleep through the night real quick and then we're going to go set up this design. Now of course we're going to need another gate reader turtle and another uh, pair of ender chests when we're ready to try this thing out um, downstairs in my main base. And wow do I move fast when jumping and sprinting with this little suit. I really am enjoying the suit a lot. And of course, you know, jetpack, awesome, off, fall cool. And where was I? Making things, that's right. Uh, so, to charge items, they need to go into the top slot of the MFSU, and guess which side the top is? The top, you guessed, right? So we're going to place our turtle on the top of this MFSU. Now, we could put it into the sides, but... Yeah, top will work. Top's better. And we want also, uh, we'll probably want this guy to turn left. Cool. And we're going to place a uh, chest in front of him and a chest on top of him. And the way this is going to work is he's going to pull items out of the top chest. He's going to stick them in the MFSU. When they're done charging, he's going to shove them in the chest in front. Really pretty straightforward. Um, now, of course, I could, like I said, do this with red power. I could do it with uh, buildcraft, but they'd be slightly larger constructions that would require me more time and effort. At this point, I'd really like to just make it nice and quick with a turtle. Um, so that's the plan. And then the the green chest here will kind of reverse this back at our main base. So over in the main base, we'll be pulling out of the green chest, pulling out fully charged items, uh, placing empty items in the red slot, and you know, going from there. So for now, we've got an MFSU. We're ready to start charging it. All right, I need Lapatron crystals. I forgot those. So let me go make some real quick. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Ready? All right, I'm going to place the Lapatron crystals in the chest above the turtle. Okay. Now I have to write a quick little bit of code, so don't mind me. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I wrote this program as quickly and simply as I possibly could. Uh, first, wrap the peripheral on the right, which is, of course, our gate reader. And then it says a, there is a function here called check charging. And what that does is it gets the data from the uh, MFSU, and it returns the value of charging fully charged item. Now, as we noticed, if the uh, MFSU is empty, that will return true. Also, if the item that's in there is fully charged, it will also return true. So basically what we're doing here is we're checking to see if, um, you know, if it's, you know, got something that's, uh, you know, currently charging, okay? Um, and uh, if it's fully charged, then, you know, true, okay? And in that case, okay, uh, I guess we could probably call this uh, call because it's really not checking for an item that's charging. It's called check done charging. It would probably be a more accurate name. Okay, so I'm making this nice and uh, easy for you guys. Uh, function empty MFSU, select slot 16, uh, pull the item uh, from the block below it, which is this, and place it in here. So that'll pull the item out of the uh, MFSU and stick it in the fully charged box. Then fill MFSU, uh, select slot 1, and we'll suck the item from above, so suck up and it grabs out of the uh, chest that has the to be charged items in it, and then it drops it below. And then while true, if check done charging, so basically we're saying, hey, are you done charging whatever's in the slot there? And if the slot's empty, then it returns true still. Then empty the MFSU. So if the slot's empty, this doesn't do anything. But if it has a fully charged item in it, it will go ahead and stick an item in the ender chest, okay? Then it will fill the MFSU and it'll sleep for five seconds. So what'll happen is it'll uh, put a Lapatron crystal in there, for example. It'll wait five seconds, and it'll check if it's done charging. If it's done charging, then it pulls it out and sticks it in the chest in front. If it's not done, uh, it'll just sleep for five seconds and check again. 
Really simple program, I hope. And uh, I really purposely made it as easy as I could. So you can see here, if we watch the currently highlighted slot, it should bounce to slot 16 and back again every five seconds or so. So it's uh, you know checking to see if there's anything in there. So let's wait for it to bounce. And then we're gonna go ahead and stick a Lapatron crystal in here. And after five seconds, we should see the Lapatron crystal get sucked out of the ender chest. The turtle placed it in slot one temporarily and then throw it in the MFSU. Now it's gonna sit here and keep checking. And it's gonna check over and over again until this thing is full. Now this will work with anything. It doesn't have to just be Lapatron crystals. I could throw anything in here, including my power tools, my quantum armor, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, in fact, I could even throw something in there as naughty as a stick. So you can't technically place um, non-chargeable items in the MFSU, okay? But turtles can, because the MFSU, that not ability, the ability here to not be able to click it is really only on the interface, not on the actual block. So I can't put things in there, but an automated system like a turtle can. So that's gonna be a little bit of a nuisance for us, but don't worry, the uh, charging function there is intelligent enough to say like, yeah, I'm done charging this stick. Okay, so what'll happen is, uh, we'll see this in a moment, the Lapatron crystal will fully charge, and the turtle will pull it out and stick it in the fully charged ender chest. Then, what'll happen is it'll grab the stick. So if the wrong item makes its way into this ender chest, it's not that big a deal. It'll wind up sticking it in uh, this ender chest right here. Cool. So hopefully it won't cause too much of a problem. Now our Lapatron crystal is almost done, so let's just give it a few seconds here, and we should see it within five seconds of completing disappear from the MFSU. And you could really make the, uh, you know, whatchamacallit thingy, uh, as short a delay as you want. I made it five seconds. You could make it one if you don't want to wait five seconds. But me, personally, I don't mind. And uh, see, look, it went and stuck a stick in there. Well, the stick is obviously not that important, but don't worry, it'll return true next time it runs, and it'll pull the stick out and throw it in the ender chest. Cool. So now all I gotta do is uh, stick some Lapatron crystals in here, and uh, it'll go ahead and pull one eventually. There it goes. And it's now charging that Lapatron crystal. Cool, right? So uh, I am going to paste bin both of these pieces of code for you, okay? I'll paste bin put test and paste bin put charge, just so you guys have access to them uh, to play around with and get used to, you know, some of the fun things you can do in computer craft. All right, now while that's running and you guys had access to the paste bins, I turned charge back on and you know what? I should actually um, edit startup and we will do shell.run charge. So that on startup, boom, it runs the charge program. And uh, we'll keep an eye on things. Cool. So the Lapatron crystal will do its thing. It'll move into the chests. Now let's head back to our main base where we're going to want to, uh, you know, tweak this a little bit. Now also note, of course, that uh, what's really cool about this, let's check out the uh, thing here. So we are actually uh, constantly refilling this MFSU. So once this guy is done charging, uh, the MFSU will refill itself, which is, you know, awesome because our nuclear reactor is running. Now, of course, when the nuclear reactor runs out of fuel, eh, we might have a problem. Uh, so we won't worry too much about that. But here we we go you can see it's completely uh, refilling itself nice right cool so nuclear reactor doing its thing UU matter filling up and we're doing a pretty nice job here cool all right now I am off to build a duplicate of that build right underneath the MFSU in my base wow I am really having a lot of fun with power suits all right so here it goes uh, gonna go ahead and Black, black, red, and black, black, green. And we should see an empty chest and a chest full of fully charged Lapatron crystals. Perfect, exactly what I expected, nice. So uh, just in the time that it took me to craft those, all four Lapatrons got fully charged up. Now to make a uh, turtle real quick, and then we should be in good shape. Where are we at with redstone? Turtle, please. First need a computer, boom and then need a turtle. Cool. Now we're also going to need the gate reader again, so we're going to have to go again and, uh, yeah, we'll have to get, I do have a gate on me, because remember I made one a minute ago, and I'll just grab these four. That sounds like a good plan. Gate reader, please. And I can put the redstone back in here. There we go. And turtle, gate reader, go. 
Now, for the MFSU downstairs, and we might wind up relocating this at some point, uh, but for this guy, okay, and uh, we might want to put this anywhere. Like, right now, obviously, my lava's doing a plenty good job of taking care of this thing, but, you know, I might want this thing running off nukes at some point, or I might want to change things up. But basically, if I were to have an MFSU in a remote location that I want to charge with this, it's really pretty much the exact same thing. The only difference being that we place the turtle below the MFSU instead of above. And for that, of course, we're going to then need... Um, you know, the following. Uh, let's put the turtle here. We'll put the uh, empty chest in front. We'll put the turtle here. And then we'll put the um, this guy, the ender chest with the full things there. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and paste bin get my nifty little program that I made a minute ago. So, for that, we need to get the code, which again was 6ACWZXSH. And we'll call that um, charge again. Edit charge. There it is. All right, so for this guy, okay, what we want to do is check uh, charging. We want to make this discharging. Discharging. Empty item? I think that's what it called. Let's see. Test. Oh, I have to get test. Uh, I'll just rewrite it. Yeah, there it is. Discharging empty item. So I think the E and empty does have to be capitalized. I think capitalization does count here. Um, so we want to check if you're currently, um, and we could even rename this to discharging if we want, but it, I don't want to mess with it too much. Discharging empty item, okay? Uh, empty MFSU will to, uh, then need to suck up. So we need to pull the item out of the block above the MFSU and then drop it forward again into the, uh, you know, the, the discharge pile. And then fill MFSU will be suck um, down and drop up. So we're basically reversing this, right? So we're saying pull the item out of here and drop it up here. Okay, that should be it. Well, true. Uh, so if the uh, discharging empty item is true, then empty the MFSU and then fill it and then sleep a few seconds. You ready? Charge. Okay, boom. It grabbed the Lapatron crystal and stuck it up in there. Awesome. Now that crystal is just going to sit there forever until it completely discharges. Now I can start charging things in there, like for example, uh, now of course because I've got uh, the lava tanks charging up that MFSU just as well, um, you know, charging items here like this will not be that big of a deal. It'll uh, refill both from the Lapatron crystal and from the uh, geothermal generators off there. But you can see it's draining slowly. And we're, so we're getting power basically both from the Lapatron and from the geothermals. Cool, right? Uh, now once the Lapatron is completely empty, of course, that's when we're going to see things change. So we might wind up uh, wanting to power some other MFSUs in the future. So we might just leave this here. And in the future, when we're ready to do other MFSUs and other remote locations or something along those lines, we'll definitely, uh, you know, put this kind of build to use. And we can repeat this build as much as we want. So uh, just for your guys' own purposes, I will um, paste bin put charge. Now there's the code that I just modified. So if you want that paste bin code, go for it. And then I'm also going to change the startup file to shell.run charge. No question mark, that's a typo. Reboot and boom. Now we're going to constantly sit here and wait for this Lapatron crystal to completely empty out. Pretty cool, right? So uh, yeah, I'm happy with this build. I think it works perfectly for us. It does exactly what I want it to do. And I'm good with this. Yeah, all right. So I will be back in just a few minutes, guys. All right, guys, we've got a pretty solid build here, I think. Uh, having lots of fun with the jump and sprint assist. So cool. Uh, we've got an automated way to charge remotely any item. And we could even make bags out of these things. So if I wanted to get an ender pouch that was connected to these two inventories, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. I could just throw anything in here that I would like to have charged. For example, I could easily just throw my quantum body armor in there. Boom. And it would eventually get placed in the MFSU to be charged. It would wait a few seconds, and then once it was fully charged, it would get pulled out by there and thrown in through the fully charged chest. So we should see that run in just a second here. There we go. It ran. Split second. Hope you caught it, but there you go. So I can place anything in there. I could even place uh, my power tool. Nifty, right? So there's the uh, power suit's power tool. It's going to get thrown into the inventory below. And then five seconds later, uh, or at least when it's done charging, it'll get pulled out and thrown into the chest. 
cool, right? So pretty much anything can be charged with this system. The turtles are relatively smart enough to handle uh, putting the wrong item in, and uh, yeah, it'll just eventually get pulled out. Pretty cool, right? Now, next episode, I am personally so tired of dealing with inventory issues. I want a lot of items. I want them stored properly. I want them to do all kinds of good things. And at this point, I've got a mess. Look at this. It's a giant mess. I've just got items everywhere. Holy cow. Uh, got quartz crystals, though, and those quartz crystals and quartz dust are going to go a long way towards solving all my inventory problems. Oh, good. I have a decent amount of quartz. So hopefully I have enough items, uh, you know, between quartz and all the other stuff built up here. Could probably... Oh, yeah. I'm doing all right on copper again. Leaving that mining machine running for a while definitely helped. So I think it's definitely time we take a look at Applied Energistics. It's a really cool mod. Uh, if we take a look in the submenu here for mods and shift click on Applied Energistics, we will see a ton of items being made available to us. Lots of really cool stuff. So next episode, we'll probably be back to look at building an Applied Energistics system. We're going to... Uh, I doubt it'll get done in one episode. I mean, I, I might be wrong. I haven't actually built one legitimately in World yet. I've only spotlighted the mod, never legitimately built it. So we're going to have to take a look at all the different options available. But uh, for now, unfortunately, we do need to wrap up the episode. So this is Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed checking this stuff out. Uh, lots of uh, applied energistics and item storage capabilities coming up next episode. And I'm also going to be keeping an eye on the uranium cells. How are we doing? Oh, they burned out. Cool. Well, uh, I guess between this episode and next, I better make more uh, uranium cells. We got a decent amount of UU matter, though. Like, lots. Uh, at this point, I'm pretty pleased with how much we have. And uh, I might even switch it up. Once my UU matter supplies are good, I'll move this, uh, you know, wireless frequency thing over to here and just measure when this MFSU is full. That might not be a terribly bad idea. I think that might actually be a really good idea. Cool. Uh, so we can see this MFSU slowly keeping my remote thermal monitor going. Everything's working pretty smoothly in this uh, nuclear reactor building. I'm really pleased with the way everything's turned out with it so far. Uh, but Applied Energistics needs a decent amount of energy, which is another part of the reason that we built that system. So uh, we'll definitely be using the nuclear power for Applied Energistics. But like I said, guys, got to wrap up the episode. So Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And take it easy.